Hi guys, my name is Russell and I make race and guide videos on YouTube for iRacing. If that sounds like it might be up your street, please do consider hitting like or hitting subscribe and that little bell so you get notified when I release a new video or go live with a live stream. So here we are, we're here, we're in the second half now of VRS GT Sprint Season 4 2020. I'm here in the Ferrari, we're at glorious Monza for what's sure to be a very exciting and potentially deadly week of racing. Um, so reasonably happy with the lap time. We're gonna do the usual thing. I'm gonna start with a full speed in-car lap using my example lap. Uh, and then we're gonna do that lap again from a rear chase. So you can sort of see the position of the car a little bit better. Um, and then I will go around each corner and break down the entry the turn in apex and exit uh, and hopefully uh, if you're not up to speed here this week it'll help you out fingers crossed please do let me know in the comments below if it does help uh, or if you've got any feedback that's much appreciated before I get on I just want to mention this so I've been banging on about it a little bit lately uh, it's becoming very real now so starting on the 7th of November is the fightingspeed.com gt3 league season one is called uk tour and the league is going to take uh, our field of 30 plus gt3 drivers on a little tour of the best tracks in the uk uh, it's going to be broadcast on apex racing tv's youtube channel and their facebook page it's also going to be simultaneously broadcast on my youtube channel um, it'd be great if you can stop by and give it a watch. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. At the time of recording, we have like one or literally two slots left available for drivers. Um, just head over to my Discord. See the link uh, in the description below if you're interested in learning more. Um, yeah, can't wait for this. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, it's been great fun working with the guys from Apex Racing TV. It's going to have fantastic tv quality uh broadcasting and commentary so yeah let's get on with it super excited now so anyway that's enough of that um let's get back to monza and uh, see if we can find some extra time around here for races this week thanks guys i'll see you next time
Okay, so that was my 148.149 at Monza in the Ferrari 488. Uh, we're just crossing the line again, same lap. And we're naturally going to want to position the car over to the left. We're going to want to touch the steering as little as possible here. You know, we've got to be um, doing everything we can to keep our speed increasing. And then we're looking on the left, we see the 200 board. And then we're coming to the 150. Now, depending how warm our tyres are, basically we're going to want to brake just as we're crossing the 150. And we're going to want to keep the car over to the left while we brake. Full threshold braking. And we're going to come all the way down to first. Now, turn in is going to be about halfway down this bit of uh, green um, overrun on the track here. It's the idea here really with as with any chicane is to try and straighten out the two opposing curves of the chicane as much as possible. So we're, we're taking as much as a straight line as we can. Now, if we turn in too late here and cut off too much of the inside curb on the apex of the first turn we're gonna get a slowdown so if we go too far over the green here so we're cutting off basically in the middle um, if we go any further than this we are going to get a slowdown but if you look the way the car's positioned here we've got a fairly straight route now to take the second half of the chicane and it's it's good to, I you know I really need to keep that in mind when I'm when I'm thinking about chicanes I always try and think straight line between turns one and two otherwise I find myself oversteering um, out of the first turn and leaving myself a big job with the second turn I don't know why it just happens quite naturally that way now on the second half we're going to take quite a lot of this red sausage. Um, and you can without getting a slowdown. Again, you know, it just takes a lot of practice to find your limits here. Um, but hitting this sausage is really going to help me rotate the car here and it will help you too. Um, the car is set up in a way where it's quite happy to ride those curbs. So make the most of it. Now here we go for Curva Grande for the first time here. Um, and all we want to do is just keep it as tight as possible and limit the amount that we're turning the wheel. And you can barely just touch the wheel around this corner and keep going up through the gears. Now you're going to get to the top of fifth. You might fancy dropping into sixth, but it's not necessarily worth it. And we're looking at the right here. As we go under the bridge, we're going to want to break just before the 100, just as we pass this access road here, or the orange of the end of this fencing here is a really good marker to use. Either or, but again, we're full threshold braking and we're gonna come down to second. And as we are coming to this curb and we're in second now, we're starting to bleed out of the brakes and that's when we really want to start our turn in. And we really, really need to attack this um, uh, first curb of the chicane. Again, we want to, we're trying to position ourselves so that when we're at the apex point here, we've got a straight a line as possible to the second curve of the chicane. Now you can take, you can mount a lot of this. I wouldn't go any further than this. I think this is probably the limit. And again, 
we can really attack this. We've got the car set up to allow us to attack this red sausage here. Uh, again, we're on the limit. We don't really want to go much further than that. And we're out on exit just about. You can use all of the all of the green curbing uh, on the left and even kind of disturb the sand a tiny bit without getting a without getting a one X there. So we're coming down to Lesmo one. And the braking marker is deceptively hard, but uh, and it's difficult to see with the shadows playing the way they are at the moment. There is just here a patch of lighter kind of dirty tarmac here um, and we're a, we're, we're a good three or four car lengths before the end of the fencing with the orange uh, markings on the end of it so you know we, we do need to fill this slightly but what we're going to do is we're just breaking quite lightly we're dropping down to third we're turning in and we've really bled out the brakes. So we are kind of just riding this corner at the moment. And we just need to make sure that we don't go too full throttle before we reach this access road. Because we will run out of exit. I want to say that it it sort of slight, uh, slightly tightens more than it looks here. And we can't use the green on the exit here. We will get a 1x there. And now as we approach Lesmo 2, we want to break about two thirds of the way towards the 50 marker from the 100 board. So we're talking sort of like at the, uh, at the 70 kind of point. And again, we're going to drop down into third, but we're going to attack this curb a lot more than we did in Lesmo 1, Lesmo 2. You can really throw yourself at this. So we're turning in quite early. We're going to take all of this green on the corner. And we've accelerated really hard out of there. We can take some of the um, overshoot here beyond the green, white and red curbing. Um, any more than that is going to be an off track. And we're going to stick over to the left here as we as we gun up through. We're going to get to the top of fifth. Again, you might find, you know, if you're doing really well here, you might find that you you could benefit from sixth. But after the after the turn there, and as we come down to Ascari, we want to be over to the right hand side of the track. We're looking to the bridge now. And again, we're going to use uh, just like the second chicane. We're going to use the orange of the fencing and this access road on the right as our braking marker. But this time we're just going to come down to third and we're going to keep an eye on the curbing on the right to help us decide our turn in. So about halfway along there, we're going to start our turn in. We've come all the way down to third. We've already bled out of the brakes quite a long way, so we're safe to rotate the wheel. Um, and we want to take this a lot earlier than um, you might think, because we're actually going to ride over the top of those no-cut bricks by quite a long way. Again, largely thanks to the way that we've set up the car here. We're about halfway over. And that's absolutely fine. It's not going to upset the car. If you hit those no cut curbs with the center of the car, you're going to have a bad time. It's going to bounce the car. You're probably going to get car damage. It's probably going to be race over if you're early in the race. Um, so we do need to sort of take it easy. But again, as with any kind of chicane setup, this has allowed us to position the car so that we've got the straightest line possible now to attack the second curve here, which is technically turn nine. So notice that we haven't come too far over to the right here on exit. If we do, the middle part of Ascari is gonna be really messy because what we need to be able to do is keep tight here, but not so tight that we're hitting these uh, no cut 
uh, black and yellow bricks here because uh, it's going to unsettle the car and ultimately you're just going to spin out and hit the wall on the right. So, you know, we're kind of dancing on the top of throttle there, but we're here for the final part, turn, turn 10 of Ascari, we are going to try and keep our foot to the floor, take half of this no cut brick and no more. Again, if you hit this with the center of the car in the middle, and if you notice the middle of the car is just on the very edge of the tip of the right hand side of, of this no cut. If you hit that in the middle, your car is going to launch, you're going to have a bad day. So it takes a lot of practice, um, but essentially what we're doing is we're cutting as much as we can uh, without upsetting the car because the car will ride over it quite smoothly most of the you know 99 times out of 100 as long as you as long as you get it right here so we're up to fourth we're using all of that exit there and this exit road and then we're just going to gun it all the way up to sixth we're gradually letting the car bleed over towards the left uh ready for parabolica arguably pro arguably the most important corner on the course so past the 200 board we're coming down towards the 100 board here and we've got this patch of uh track overrun here on the left in green and we're we're essentially going to start our braking about midway along there so around about the 100 board There we go. And we're going to bring the car down to third. And we're going to watch the inside curb on the right hand side. So what we want to do is we want to do the majority of our threshold braking in a straight line here. Down to third gear, we're going to bleed out. And as we're coming to this end of this grass area where the where the concrete sort of starts. We're going to start our turn in. We're going to keep about 5% on the brake here because what we want to do is we're using the brake here just to make sure that we're tight to this inside curb and no more. So, you know, you're going to want to practice this. And ideally, when you practice it, you're going to overrun. You know, you're not going to brake enough and you're going to go out wide and just sort of learn how to feather that brake just to try and keep you on the inside curb while at the same time bleeding as little speed as you can because it is really all about kind of maintaining as much momentum as you possibly can while still apexing this corner so we're just we're still just bleeding out and now right it's difficult here because you can't quite see it but if we just frame forward a little while we're going to come to the end um, of this curbing on the inside and that is ultimately our apex point but because we've had a particularly good run here we're actually able to get the gas down sooner uh, which is fab um, but we do just build up the accelerator nice and gently and then this steering angle we've got we want to use every opportunity we can to limit that so we're quite happy to to scooch out quite wide here because it's going to allow our speed to continue growing um, but we don't want to oversteer the car so we're forcing ourselves to stay tight to this corner that's just going to slow us down and now we're aiming basically for the line running through the center of the track here and we are going to carry as much speed as we possibly can down to the line for another lap here at Monza now Monza's a pain in the butt frankly i love this course it's a difficult track to race um, do bear in mind when you are following cars you are uh, on this course you're going to have so much dirty air that you're going to want to adjust your braking markers early if you're following close behind cars otherwise you're going to overshoot everything it's bad news especially for the first chicane and the second chicane here um, good luck don't forget to go and grab my setup and ghost car from my discord channel link down uh, in the description below hope this was useful if it was please do consider subscribing and hitting that little bell uh, so you can get a notification whenever i go live with a new video
Cheers, guys. Have a good one. See you next time.